Hello, this is the Truth Seeker again. I've uh, got some dishes to do, but I do want to start posting more videos, so I'm going to try posting on my cell phone. This should be a long video, so hopefully my cell phone can can handle it. I think it I think it should. It's one of the newer models, and uh, boy, today was a hot day. All I can say is, I've got the fan cranked on here, uh, blowing through the other window, and uh, Southern California gets hot in the summer. So, uh, flies start going around. <laughs> anyway, and if any of you know, on a hot day the kitchen can become a smelly mess. So I like to keep it clean, even though I really don't do as much dishes as I should, because uh, I only get a chance to do that on the weekends most of the time, and uh, try to do a little more here and there. So, as most of you know, my mom passed away about a year ago, a year and a half ago. And I moved into the house I grew up in. And since then, it has been a very big challenge to get everything in order. <laughs> Pretty much, um, most of the dishes in the kitchen, we tried to get rid of most of them, but there's still so many we need to get rid of. And, uh, course we do the paper plate thing and um, so right now we've also got the floor all the carpet pulled up it's been that way for a while now uh, seeing as how I'm trying to get that project going and if I don't then I'm gonna have to hire somebody to just get it done. Uh, but I was able to get a, a few things done. I uh, was up on the roof a couple months ago and cut a hole in the roof and put in a uh, an attic fan to evacuate some of the heat up there. But I might have to eventually get another fan, seeing as how the one is not enough to move all the heat out of the attic. And of course the, the insulation in the attic, which I've been kind of doing a little here and there, because the house was never insulated. In fact, I grew up in this house not really knowing uh, the comforts of air conditioning. And uh, we were fine. <laughs> But now as I'm getting older, I realize just how Dutch my mother was <laughs> and how much she really did without. But of course, she never did without love. So there was plenty of that here. And uh, I grew up with what was most important. So, I've been doing a study on the angel of the Lord periodically I just do it on my cell phone I got it on a Google Doc and uh, so far it's going to be an eight part blog series which I'll be posting on my blog but eventually I'll be getting into videos on that topic and I also have another uh, project in queue which of course is not I've not yet started it, but it's, um, I believe that's Deuteronomy 32. Um, and, and of course all of this is addressing uh, radical critical claims of uh, early polytheistic notions in 
early Hebrew thought. So basically most of my stuff is just going over how it's not necessarily so. <laughs> you know. And that tends to be the case with most of it is just because you say so doesn't make it so. Anyway, um, still doing my job right now that uh, the Lord has blessed me with since 2012. And uh, possibly thinking about other options. Not really sure though. Um, it's, a, it's a bit of a drive for me. And. Um, I went ahead and I leased an electric car just so that I could drive in the carpool lane here in Southern California. So that cut about 30 minutes off my drive. And um, so, yeah, you know, the last year and a half, two years, I've been moving around a lot. I mean, actually, we've been moving around a lot since 2009 when I was laid off from major aerospace company uh, here in Southern California and uh, since that time I had a uh, contract job for a year and a half or a little over a year and then uh, that company was also doing hard and I my contract was not renewed, so I hit the pavement running again, and I got the job I currently have within six months. So whereas it took me 17 months before to get a job, the second time it only took me six months. And I think it was a combination of things. Uh, this was in 2012, so there was a little bit of an economic rebound, but not much. And Plus, I was already, already so primed and polished from my 17th month job search previously that uh, I was just ready to go and I wasn't going to waste any time, you know. I had already started my job search really three months prior to my contract ending at this other company. and when they let me go at the end of uh, 2011, I had my job by July 2012. So, um, but it's been a very interesting uh, five years, in the last five years. I should say, yeah, I guess from 2009 to Two thousand fourteen, five years. So, um, my wife uh, went out with her son tonight to an Oktoberfest thingy, and I was pretty uh, wiped out. Went to church this morning, uh, visit my old home church, took my dad, and. Uh, had a good time and uh, went out to a brunch at uh, El Torito <laughs> Mexican <laughs> and uh, came back here and just uh, did a little bit more studying. I joined the textual uh, criticism group on a Yahoo group uh, because I'm trying to figure out some symbols that I'm looking at at the Leningrad Codex of uh, Judges chapter 13 verse 16. Uh, seeing as how I'm not a very uh, skilled interpreter of Masora or Cantoral markings. <laughs> I'm just sort of getting into that now um, with the Hebrew. Um, 
But I did have the wonderful opportunity to take some beginning Hebrew classes again uh, during last year, 2013, and um, really learned a lot more about Hebrew and uh, really excited to learn more. But just, you know, I'm kind of taking a break because um, um, the demands of work and, you know, moving into this home and just, just providing for uh, the necessities, trying to stay on top of everything. So I'm doing that. And uh, my wife and I are getting ready for a trip to Italy next year, finally. Uh, we will go to Italy. It'll be the first major vacation we've ever had. Aside from our honeymoon back in 1994, which was just a Mexican Riviera cruise, which was nice. And I could say overall that we're blessed. And uh, thank God for his blessings. Anyway, um, I'm still uh, chipping away at, at uh, the Who Wrote the Bible series. Actually, I can't really say I'm chipping away at it, but I do... <laughs> I do want to finish that series, and I think I'm on part eight, or part nine. Anyway, um, it's just a matter of getting to it, and you know, it just um, I, I started getting more interested in some other things that uh, basically were more important uh, regarding my overarching message that I give, you know, in my life, or, you know, what I feel that God has made me focus in on, you know, hone in on, and that is in regard to Messianic ideas, but, uh, I, you know, I'm an advocate of the Bible, and I... Um, will always defend it. I will always defend the Jewish scriptures and the New Testament scriptures, the uh, New Covenant scriptures. And uh, still looking for a Messianic congregation in this area. It's really hard to find one in this particular area of Southern California, which is not really Orange County. Orange County has a lot of different Messianic groups, probably more more concentration there than uh, than any area in Southern California. But um, in this area, which is kind of near Long Beach metro area, um, it's really not uh, many groups. I think there's one in Garden Grove, and I visited that one, but uh, just wasn't my style of uh, Messianic Judaism. And, um, oh, you know what I wanted to, <laughs> you know, I used to grow a beard out. and You know, I might grow my beard out again. At this time, I don't really feel called. Um, I'm really sort of celebrating my Gentileness at this, at this, stage of my life, I'm very comfortable with, uh, you know, who the Lord made me, who, you know, that I was born as a Gentile. Uh, not that I still don't still uh, keep some of the dietary laws of uh, Judaism. I still do my best to not eat pork and uh, other non-kosher foods. Not that I'm stellar like this, you know. But uh, for a while there, you know, I had to understand the whole not bringing a razor to your skin and you know, growing the beard out, which is perfectly fine. Perfectly fine, but not really 
not really commanded to Gentiles. You know, it's okay if a Gentile would like to uh, keep that commandment and um, stand in solidarity with the Jewish nation. But standing in solidarity with the Jewish nation is one thing, um, which is sort of separate and apart from our salvation. Um, and of course, any Jewish person would tell you that salvation is not dependent upon our keeping the commandments. Um, but anyway, I uh, really, really been studying this last week uh, the scripture, Judges 13, verse 16. And uh, if any of you have a little more knowledge of the Leningrad Codex and not so much the cantoral markings, but to me they look like Masora. Um, they could also be Aramaic editorial markings, as a lot of Jews spoke Aramaic, um, even though they were faithful to the Hebrew and copied the Hebrew, they would do markings in Aramaic. So I'm thinking maybe they're Aramaic markings, but I wouldn't know because I haven't studied the Aramaic language yet. So, maybe if some of you know Aramaic, uh, let me know, and I'll, uh, I'll give you the web link, I'll give you the web link of what I'm talking about, and, um, so yeah, uh, study-wise, lots going on, and I've been studying this since last year, not that one particular scripture, but a whole series on the angel of the Lord. Man, it is hot tonight. <laughs> anyway. Um, so, you know what? I think I'm going to cut this video short at this time. I just wanted to touch base again with everybody. Uh, let you all know uh, what my upcoming projects are. If you want to respond to this video, I found out how you can respond. And that is you just copy the link of your video and paste it in the comments section just like you would in Facebook because apparently they allow that now on YouTube so so uh, so if you want to respond to this go right ahead and uh, God bless you all keep seeking truth and I look forward to my next video